Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Thick Dad Podcast. This is episode five, which uh, feels unbelievable. I can't believe we've made it this far and that I haven't had a full-on mental breakdown on camera, but that's good. I uh, thank you so much for being here. If you've made it through the first four episodes, kudos to you. You're stronger mentally than anyone in my family or immediate circle of friends. So uh, episode five, I just found out my mom listens to this podcast, which is a horrible nightmare. I would rather uh, almost anything else be a nightmare. And the thing about nightmares uh, is that you wake up and they're not real. But my mom uh, calling me and being like, hey, I, so on your podcast, I heard, whoa, worst sentence ever. All right. Worst sentence ever to start a phone conversation with one of your parents is her saying, so I was listening to your podcast and whoa, anything that comes after that, not worth it. So um, hi, mom, if you're listening to this. I just text me, okay? You don't have to. You don't have to listen to this. I uh, I can get someone else to get the download if that's what you're trying to do and be nice. Um, just text me or call me. WhatsApp me. I don't know. Facebook message. You're in your 60s. We know people of that age bracket love a good Facebook message. So, welcome. Uh, thank you so much again for being here. I uh, let's do a little bit of a potty training update. My Two and a half, almost three year old son has been potty trained for close to a month now, I think. He's been doing fantastic. He's had very few accidents. He's picking up on the concept. And things are going well when it comes to him going to the potty when he feels that he has to go. The downside is that I can't pee or poo alone ever because he's so interested. In pee and poo now. I haven't been able to take a crap alone um, at home since we did the potty training. He's always like asking to see it. I don't know if anyone else's toddlers are like this. They're just like poop obsessed now. Uh, Like I'm literally considering going down to like a gully or a quarry near my house to poo now. Just so I can do it in private. Maybe have a hot coffee there. Kill two birds. Kill two poops with one stone if you will. Um, But like I'll be trying to. Even if it's upstairs on a different floor of the house, I'll like sneak away. If my wife's watching both the kids in the living room, I'll sneak away to go poo. I'm sneaking away to poo in my own house. Welcome to being a toddler parent. God, I'll like try to sneak away to poo in my own house. And then all of a sudden my toddler will like ride by on a bike with a ukulele and be like, Papa, I want to see your poop. I want to see it. Anyways, he's doing fantastic. So that part of it's great. I just, I would love to be able to poo by myself again at some point in my life. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Speaking of my son as well, he had croup recently, which I thought it was pronounced crew for like the first several hundred times I said it, including I said it to like the doctors and they looked at me like, maybe you need to be admitted for being stupid. It's called croup. So we, uh, I had to take my son to the emergency room, which is never a fun thing with a toddler. Thankfully, there's a, g- a great emergency room near us that we were in and out in about three hours. But toddlers have no pain. Like, the second we get there, he doesn't understand that we have to, like, wait to see a doctor. So I'm trying to, like, explain to a two-and-a-half-year-old that is coughing from the depths of hell. That's what a croup cough sounds like. I'm trying to explain to him that, like, we have to stay here because we have to, like, meet all these people and he's like I want to go home and I'm like me too dude but we can't because first of all when when a toddler has croup they're when they talk it sounds like they're a squirrel who's been smoking cigarettes for 40 years they sound like those people back in the day in like the don't smoke campaigns that have like a hole in their throat my son comes out to me daddy I want mac and cheese I'm like Gah, what what are you 90 You've been smoking menthol since you were 12 years old? What happened? Time to go to the hospital. I had a chest x-ray. My son was actually amazing at the hospital. It's, I'm making it sound, I'm sure other people and most people have nightmare experiences at an emergency room with a toddler. I went by myself. My wife stayed home with our daughter. And it was not a terrible time. He was obviously not feeling well. He was super low energy and he was kind of tired. It was at the end of the day, but we made it through. He had a chest x-ray and I was like, oh no, like how am I going to have this kid sit still for 30 seconds while they do a chest x-ray and he did it twice like perfectly and, and all the doctors and they were given a medicine and he was taking it fine. He had to get some steroids to deal with the swelling in his throat. 
And the doctors the whole time were like, wow, he's such a good, and I'm like, no, 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 no. It's, it was like that, that audio where it's like, why are you being so nice? Show them how crazy you are. At home, he would have been like, if I tried to get my son a chest x-ray at home, he would burn our house to the ground. <laughs> Anyways, um, he's, he's been awesome. My son's at such a fun age. He's talking, having conversations. Oh, I got my, this is horrifying. I, um, a couple nights ago, my son hit me with the first, um, didn't physically hit me with something. He hit me emotionally. He hit me with the first, I don't like you. Whoa. Ho. Oh. Okay. I thought that came in the teenage years. You're not even three and you're telling me you don't like me already because I'm trying to take you out of the bath that you didn't want to get into? Look, little guy, you're not even three yet. I thought that was a teenage thing. What, what are you going to do tomorrow? Try to steal my car keys and go sell my golf clubs to buy Percocet? Come on. Let's dial it down a bit. You're still a baby in my eyes. I can still pick you up. Sometimes you pee in your pants a little. You're not ready to say that you don't like me yet. God, so that, that hurt my feelings a lot. And uh, One thing I, I should have mentioned at the beginning, because I'm bad at marketing, um, I am opening this week, Thursday, October 10th, I am opening for Derek Cahill for three stand-up comedy shows at Comedy Bar Danforth in Toronto, which is very exciting. I've opened for Derek before. He is a very funny comedian with a hilarious hour um, that uh, I've seen a couple of times, and it's unbelievable. He's so funny. He's also extremely short, so like his funniness per inch of height, the ratio is off the charts. So I'm very excited to see Derek again and get to uh, get to open for him. Three shows. We have a 7 p.m. show, a 9 p.m. show, and those sold out. So now we have an 11 p.m. show, which I don't know if I've ever done. I haven't done comedy that late in a decade. I'm going to legitimately have to be on amphetamines to start a comedy show at 11 p.m. Like it's and during the week. It's on a Thursday too. It's not even like I can trick my brain into being like, oh, this is a Saturday. I have to go to work the next morning. Whoa. Anyway, so that's very exciting. I'm excited to open for Derek and see him. Um, he's very, very funny. So my son, okay, my kids right now, I don't know if anyone else is experiencing this. I know there's a lot of people who have two kids under three. Two under two is such a catchy phrase, and my kids are not under two, two, two under two. I'm two under three. doesn't have the same ring to it, but my kids are being so sweet with each other right now that it's suspicious. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because... You expect them to, like, have these evil interactions with each other, right? Like, my son occasionally will, like, take a book from my daughter or take a toy that he claims is his that he hasn't used in two years, right? And those moments happen, but I, I was expecting more of those moments. And now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm sure I will get those because that's just how the universe works. But my son and daughter are so sweet with each other. He, every morning... He, he loves to give her kisses. He tries to give her hugs. He likes to cuddle with her. He wants to pick her up. He's being so sweet with her. And they're being so sweet together. She laughs at him. She smiles at him. They're being so sweet that it's suspicious that I'm convinced that they're planning something extremely evil. Like something catastrophic is coming down the pipeline. And they're just like meeting in an evil corner of my house at night, the two of them, and being like, look, just during the day, just be super nice so they don't suspect anything. But now they're being so sweet together that I am suspecting and expecting that something is going to be around the corner. So I don't know what that, what those two have in store for us, but they're being so sweet. It's, it's crazy. Like my son this morning wanted to cuddle with my daughter and asked me to take a picture and then made her smile. And then he said cheese too. I was like, what is happening? This is so incredibly adorable that I'm, it's off putting. It's off-putting how cute they're being right now. But let's hope that continues because I'm sure they'll both legitimately be plotting against my wife and I at some point very soon. My son also, uh, he enjoys Perrier. I've had Perrier on this podcast before. I enjoy the drink. And my son, I was having one during dinner the other day. And my son goes, oh, daddy, what's that, what's that, what's that name? And I was like, oh, this is um, this is water. And he's like, I, I try some. And he tried some, and he goes, "Ooh, Daddy, spicy, spicy water," which is means spicy. And I thought like he's gonna hate it. And he goes, "Ooh, I like spicy water." So 
My son is a fancy pants Richie Rich, little mother effer now. Apparently, he likes Perrier, which he calls Pisces water, and he enjoys it. I'm just, what's next? Okay, my son's going to be, if they try to give him water at daycare, he's going to be like, is it still or sparkling? He'll come home and he'll, he'll start calling me Papa. Papa, tell me about the Rolls Royce Motor Company. What? My son, I'm on the way to my son being like, Papa, I found some some homes for us that if we purchase, we can summer there. Papa, can we summer in the Hamptons? That's what I that's what I see every time my son takes a sip of Pisces water. I see him asking if we're going to go if we're going to summer in the Hamptons. Uh, no, son, our house is attached to t- houses on either side. Our current and only home is not a detached home. We don't summer in the Hamptons. We summer in the backyard. If you want to get fancy, go in the shed for a bit. Go on the slide. That's where we summer. God, I hope my son doesn't turn out like... What a scary concept. Oh, Pisces! My son drinks Perrier. There's, I can't wait for a message from daycare. I'm being like, um, your son requested Perrier at school today. <laughs> oh, I just know that's coming down the pipeline. So it's fall, which is my favorite time of the year. I've mentioned that before. I am kind of a basic bitch, to be quite honest. I got a new vest, which is very exciting. So I'm fully embracing fall. Hot hot vest, dad, fall. I'm fully embracing it. The weather is, is getting to that perfect temperature where you're not just sweating your dick and ass and vagina if you have one off every time you leave your house. So I'm very excited about that. But the pressure, the pressure to do fall activities, I feel like that other than outside of holidays like Christmas, Easter, Halloween, the pressure to do fall activities, it seems insurmountable someday. Like, you know, there's there's pumpkin patches, there's apple picking, there's this, there's that. All these like events and, and things you can you can go to, you, you can take your kids to. The pressure to do all that stuff seems like I just want to chill sometimes, you know? Because online you'll see these videos, these dumb videos of like, they'll be like, have you gone and made your own cider with your kids yet? And you're like, what? we can barely get out of the house some Sundays. Make my own cider. Have you gone and grown your own pumpkins from scratch and then carved the entire first testament of the Bible into it yet? And you're like, huh? No, I tried to make eggs this morning and it didn't go well. Have you built an entire tree fort for your kids for fall yet? All you need is $6,000 worth of lumber and 19 straight hours uninterrupted to get it done. The pressure on social media to do fall activities and do fall things seems way too much. Just go out and have a good time. Go apple picking. Went apple picking last week, maybe. I don't know if I talked about this already. 93% humidity. I was wearing pants. My armpits turned into Niagara Falls. People were doing boat tours under my armpits. There was so much humidity and water. It was unbelievable. I just, the, the pressure to do stuff. That's why I hate these videos. Sometimes I rage watch these videos to just like piss myself off. But sometimes the videos you see online of like, Look what I'm doing for my kids. And it's just like the most elaborate thing that's, it's obvious that the person has unlimited income and free time. And you're like, well, that's not realistic. Tried to make dinosaur shaped toast the other day. Accidentally cut part of the dinosaur's head off. My son had a complete meltdown. Anyways, because it's also like, I'm not a great DIY dad. I wish I was a better DIY dad. I wish I had those skills. And unfortunately I don't. I, so we've, we've moved my daughter's seven months now. Um, congrats to us for making it this far. My daughter's seven months. So we're trying our best, our damnedest, our hardest to put her into her own room now. Um, which is going eh, not well. She wakes up all the time. I don't know what she's up to. I think she sets alarms or something on like her mobile, like goes off every hour. Cause she wakes up so often, but so we ha- I had to put a dimmer switch in my daughter's room so that when we're putting her down, we can dim the lights because otherwise it's just like the inside of an airport terminal all at all times without a dimmer. So 
I was like, I can do this myself. I'm a smart person. I went to two years of sport management school and two years of comedy college. I think I can do a dimmer switch. So I read the instructions, watched the videos, bought the correct dimmer switch, figured out that I needed it. And I don't know who wired my house, but a fool, okay, an idiot, someone doing tomfoolery wired my house because I, they're like, okay, there's going to be three different colored wires on the switch. When you unplug it, there's a grounding wire and this wire and that wire. I pull the switch off. All three wires are black. So now it's just a guessing game. And let me tell you, guessing games can be fun. When they involve electricity, uh uh-uh, not fun, okay? So now I'm like trying to hook this switch up and I hook it up the first time. I don't electrocute myself. First of all, I knew to turn the power off in my house, okay? I'm not that stupid. So my concussions haven't been that bad. So by the way, to fast forward to the end for a second, I ended up running down to my basement to switch the power on and off. I don't know, a hundred times. Anyways, so I hook the switch up, go back down, power back on, go upstairs. The light, the dimmer switch works perfectly. I'm like, I can't believe that I nailed this on the first try. That is unbelievable. I started started to be like, maybe I should start doing DIY videos. Then I go to go to the bathroom and none of the other lights on the main on the top floor of my house work. Nothing. I have somehow shut off electricity to every light and power switch on the top floor of my house except the new dimmer switch. So I'm like, oh boy, that's not good. Go back down, flip the power off. I'm trying to like figure things out. I, I, I go to put the switch, the original switch back to be like, Am I getting these wires right? Because they weren't labeled. They're all black, which is insane. I don't know what electrician could get away with doing something like that. So I put the original switch back on just to be like, okay, let me figure out which wire is which. Because obviously I switched two of them. And the one that like conducts the power to the rest of the floor was obviously hooked up to the wrong one because nothing else works. So I put the original switch back on with the three wires. And I go, okay, I just have to figure out which wire is which now. Go back down, turn the power on, go upstairs, turn the switch on. Switch in the baby's room doesn't turn on. None of the other lights on the top floor work except the fan in the bathroom's going on now. Whoa, what is happening? So obviously those aren't the right wires. So I figured out on the second try, I actually ended up getting it and now everything works properly. I don't recommend doing this. If you pull a uh, switch out of the wall and all three wires are the same color, call somebody, okay? Don't do what I did. I didn't even clo- get close to electrocuted somehow. I'm not really sure how that was possible, but it was a uh, it was a dangerous day and I was very frustrated and I just kept like, just wanting to like, the fact that I didn't bite through my own face out of frustration of just like, what idiot set me up with this? Um, but I ended up getting it done and I will start doing DIY videos for sure. Um, Halloween with kids. Halloween's coming up and I'm going to be honest, I'm stressed, okay? Because I don't know what to do for costumes or costumes, if you pronounce it that way. Because um, in the past, we've picked costumes for my son because he was small. And now he's all opinionated. He's peeing and pooing by himself. He's telling me he doesn't like me. So he's, you know, 14 now, all of a sudden. He went from two to 14. And I don't know what, I need help, okay? I need help. Do you pick a costume for an almost three-year-old? Because whatever you pick, they're gonna, it's the wrong one for sure. Or do you take them to the costume store and get them to pick their own? Because then at least they have some sort of autonomy. They have some sort of, control over the situation but then he'll pick something dumb that's not a kid's costume he'll like point at the cashier and be like i want to i want to dress like that and you're like i you can't dress like a 60 year old woman who resents the month of october because she has to deal with people buying costumes you can't that's not realistic you have to pick one from the toddler section from the 3t 4t section which paw patrol character do you want to be you love paw patrol and he'll be like i don't like paw patrol no more The speed at which a toddler can switch up the things they like, the things they don't like, they can, my son will ask for mac and cheese for a meal. And sometimes before it's even done cooking, he'll say he doesn't want it. But sometimes he'll say during a bite, he doesn't want it. Like he'll be excited about the mac and cheese up until he's 
physically chewing it and it's in his body. And he'll be like, I don't like mac and cheese. I don't like it. And I guess you do. That's insane. Anyways, I, uh, well, we were already there. 20 minutes. Look at that. What a fun episode. Thank you so much for listening. Um, once again, I'm hoping that the next episode is a special episode, episode six. Keep an eye out for that one because I'm hoping to have a very special guest on the podcast. I still have some logistical nightmares to work out, but I'm hoping that I'm going to have my first guest on the next episode, which is very exciting. So once again, I am, if you're listening to this and you live in the Toronto area and you want to come to an 11 PM comedy show with Derek Cahill and myself, uh, there are tickets available for the 11 p.m. show. Obviously, that's insane. What are we doing? That's, that show is going to be a freak show. I can't wait. Um, as always, if you're having difficulties with your time postpartum, whether it's uh, postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, or anything in between, I hope you're getting the love you need. I hope you're getting the support you need. I can't wait to get back on stage and do some stand-up this week. Thank you so much for listening and downloading. I genuinely love you guys. Happy October.